There's a buzz in Washington, D.C. And it's not just because Trump is set to take office next month or because the Redskins are pushing for the playoffs for the second year. No, people are excited about the latest casino from MGM Resorts. MGM National Harbor, it's finally arrived. Yep, today marks the grand opening for National Harbor, which is located in Oxon Hill, Maryland, which is just a 10-minute drive from D.C. Wall Street's convinced that this new location could give MGM's earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization a $200 million boost. That's nothing to sneeze at. Now, MGM stock is up nearly 30% since we urged you to buy the stock after we last spoke to the CEO, Jim Muren, six months ago. It's got a lot going for it beyond this red-hot new property in Washington. Companies made a series of moves designed to unlock value for shareholders, spun off the real estate under their, uh, their hotels and casinos as a real estate investment trust. We like that one, too. MGM growth properties, along with buying the other half of the board guide, Atlantic City didn't own, and of course, continue to expand in Macau, the Chinese gambling mecca, which has been lifting the whole group as it begins to rebound after spending a while down the dumps. But of course, there were sto- stories out of uh, Chinese press today that ATM cash limits may hurt the business. The latest quarter, reported a month ago, very strong, and National Harbor isn't even open yet. But can the stock continue to run despite the 4% decline off those China uh, Macau stories? Let's check in with Jim Muren, the chairman and CEO of MGM Resorts International, find out more about his brand new casino right outside Washington, see what it means for the future of the company. Jim, welcome back to Mad Money. Thank you for having me, Jim. All right, you look like you are in uh, one of the most beautiful sites that I've seen. Tell me why this National Harbor is so important for your huge company. So, Jim, we've invested uh, $1.4 million here on the banks of the Potomac, eight miles from Washington, D.C., uh, because we believe that we're going to do tremendously well financially. There are three airports right around us. We got 40 million people a year visit our nation's capital. And uh, we believe that our form of entertainment, food and beverage, and casino gaming is going to be very profitable for Maryland and very profitable for MGM. There's never been really big time entertainment destination uh, associated with Washington, D.C. What kind of acts are you going to be bringing in to make it so that we want to go to your place specifically? Well, that's exactly right. It kind of, Washington kind of shuts down around 10 o'clock at night, so everyone's going to be coming over here. So we have Bruno Mars, we got Boys to Men, we have Lionel Richie, Duran Duran, Cher. Uh, the list goes on. We're going to bring back boxing to National Harbor in Prince George's County, UFC. There, it seems like every weekend we're going to have an event in our new 4,000 seat entertainment venue. Is there enough room? Are there enough hotel rooms to be able to handle the business you're bringing? Well, we built only 300 rooms here because there are about 3,000 in the market, Jim. There's that Gaylord has a really fine convention hotel here, another 1,000 rooms in the market. Our idea is to help everyone um, do well here. There's plenty of demand. Virginia doesn't have gaming. The district, as you know, they've never had a bad day in Washington, D.C. economically. So there's a lot of money around here, um, and they're going to be coming over to Maryland to spend it. All right. Now, I know uh, there's a lot of uh, just near-term news, and some of it might be noise. A story out of the South China Post that maybe there'll be limitations placed this weekend on how much money gamblers can take out of ATMs. I know Macau's very important to your company. I know when I go to a casino, I do want access to ATMs. Is this going to hurt you guys? Well, so first, let's put this in context. We have about 20% of our profits in Macau. 80% of our profits are here in the United States. That said, let's take a look at Macau. The Chinese government's done a really good job over many, many years trying to uh, sustain growth for Macau. What they want to see is not a lot of knee-jerk growth or up and down growth. They want to see consistent improvement in tourism and revenue. I think the controls the Chinese government have put into place uh, are consistent with the kinds of controls they have put into place in the past. So I, I know there's a lot of chatter about this today. Right. Uh, I don't want to minimize its significance. It will reduce some gaming revenue, but the long-term play in Macau is an extremely positive story, and we're looking forward to opening up a very, very entertainment-laden new resort in Kotai next year. Okay, that's important because, I mean, the stock hit an all-time high today and then did reverse on this. I want people to know, be aware because I think that National Harbor is so much more exciting, but there is, you, you correctly, because I know you were an analyst in the old days, 
identify the issue. Now, let's talk about yeah. something that's changed the country, whether you like him or not. I know sometimes you're a little bit critical of him, but we have a new president, okay? And he is, to some degree, uh, the opposite of President Obama comes in. President Obama actually hurt Las Vegas. This guy's kind of been in the casino business, most certainly, but he understands the hospitality business. Uh, pros and cons of a uh, President Trump for you guys. So, more pros and cons, I can say that. Uh, the gaming business, hospitality in general, does best in a growing economy. We, we all want that. We want the economy to grow. We want job growth in the United States. That means more disposable income. So, very big positive there. Reducing some regulation, reducing a lot of bureaucracy, also very positive. Having someone that understands the global hospitality business, it's got to help. You know, 18% of our business in Las Vegas is international tourists. I'm all about bringing international tourists to the United States because, let's face it, they spend more money when they come here. They're great tourists. So I'm a very, very positive person about the president-elect's administration. Uh, I know a lot of folks that know him well. Uh, they think he's uh, going to be the right guy in, for this time in our nation's history, and I'm looking forward to working with him. I know he feels very strongly about creating jobs. Does any industry create as many jobs as yours? And how many jobs are created at National Harbor? Well, thanks for asking, because there's been a lot of talk about jobs around the United States, and, and rightly so. But let's, let's represent my industry for a second. Gaming industry in the United States, 1.8 million American jobs. And they're not just jobs. These are literally great careers, the pathway to the middle class. Our company, my company, in just in a two-year period of time, has created 8,000 new jobs between Las Vegas, here 4,000 jobs in Maryland, and another 3,000 jobs in Springfield, Massachusetts in about a year's time. We are all about job growth, and uh, I could say that our industry is not only a, an important part of the U.S. economy, but a growing part and having a growing political voice in what's important to America. Uh, last, last thing that you mentioned at your conference call was you, you threw out Japan. I mean, Japan would be another unbelievable market. Is that something that we could see three, five years from now? So, Jim, it could happen literally any day. The lower house of the diets already proved the promotion act. In the upper house, which would be the equivalent of their Senate, is debating it right now. If Japan moves forward, uh, with uh, this bill, which would ultimately lead to RFPs, requests for proposals for integrated resorts, uh, Japan could be the largest gaming market uh, in the world. Uh, second only probably to Macau, but only because uh, they're going to limit the number of resorts they have in their beautiful country. So uh, we're all uh, spending a lot of time in Japan. We're rooting them on. And if the Japanese people uh, want integrated resorts, uh, MGM wants to help, and I will promise you I'll do my best. All right, last question. I know that even right before the election, you had some critical things to say about the way uh, Mr. Trump does handle himself. A lot of people have come around to the idea, look, you know, that stuff, that's campaign rhetoric, and that's a uh, little visceral, uh, visceral reaction. Now with a month to cogitate on it, how do you feel? I feel really great. I, I, yes, for a... A CEO that represents a company that the majority of my employees are minorities with a kind of divisive rhetoric on both sides of the campaign throughout the political season. I, for one, am glad it's over and uh, it's, it's back down to business. And so I didn't like the rhetoric at all from either candidate. Um, I, I stick up for my employees. I care a lot about diversity and inclusion. I care about good trade policies. I care about immigration, having strong borders, uh, being a welcoming, though, country uh, to folks to visit us and to work legally here. So I have a lot of distinct views. Um, and I'm looking forward uh, to the fact that President-elect Trump uh, is a business person first. Uh, he's going to be a consensus builder. He's putting together, a, I think, a very fine team. And I'm looking forward to a rising economy a rising economy is great for MGM. All right, Jim, I'm looking forward to going to National Harbor myself. Congratulations on this and for the fabulous performance you've given shareholders. Best of luck this weekend, sir.
Thank you very much, Jim. All right, exciting story, but you know, also you've got the Macau worries. So, I mean, when that gets built in a little more, then maybe that's your better opportunity. But you know, we've been behind this one for a long time, and we're staying that way. Jim Muren, Chairman and CEO of MGM Resorts International. They have money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.